Hey there, I'm Tucker and you're watching D&D Daily. Today we're going to be talking about the Bedlam Barbarian. This build was requested by Knox Browning, who can mind control anyone that's attracted to him. So, everyone. If you want to play the Bedlam Barbarian, we are going to be a Wild Magic Barbarian multi-class with a Wild Magic Sorcerer. We are only going to take one or maybe two levels of Sorcerer and then the rest are going to be in Barbarian. And our race is going to be Fairy. The Bedlam Barbarian is a Fairy that was raised in the Feywild. As he grew up there, he was absorbed into the heavy emotion of the plane, and that same power and emotion was absorbed into him. Growing up in the Feywild, he learned combat and magic in conjunction with each other, but both were suffused with the wildness of that plane. One day as he was wandering around the Feywild, he accidentally stepped through a Fey crossing to the material plane. After exploring this new and exciting plane for a time, he was unable to find his way back to that same Fey crossing and was thus stuck on the material plane, unable to return home. However, he was not without hope. When he went to the material plane, the chaotic energy of the Feywild stayed with him and presented itself whenever he used magic or became very strongly emotionally charged. So now he is looking for a way to get back to the Feywild in order to reunite with his friends and family there. The Bedlam Barbarian's personality is one full of emotion and whimsy. He was raised in the Feywild and has the personality of the Feywild present in everything he does. He would be whimsical, he would be prone to heavy emotion, whether that be anger, happiness, or anything like that. If you really want a deeper dive into this personality, it would be good to look up Spring, Eladrin, and their personality tables. In combat, the Bedlam Barbarian is going to play very much like a normal Barbarian, with the exception of our wild magic abilities when we rage. These are going to be a little bit chaotic, but very much fun if you want to be in chaos, which if you're taking wild magic barbarian and wild magic sorcerer, you probably really love the chaos, so make sure to really play on that. We are going to use a battle axe for our main weapon, and can either use a shield or use our battle axe with the versatile property. We're not going to be able to use a great axe, great sword, or maul because we can't use heavy weapons because we are a small race, though. The only time we will really use spells in combat is if we are far enough away from our enemy that we can't reach them in a turn or two. So this is the time we are going to use our spells because we won't want to rage yet because that will waste it. So instead we're going to use our long range cantrips and spells so we can get a few hits in on our way there. Things like Firebolt, Chill Touch, and Magic Missile stand out as really good things that this barbarian could use before he rages. We'll be using Tides of Chaos on ourselves to help with checks like grappling and with our saving throws, particularly with our wisdom saving throw is really low. We'll also be using it on our allies to help them with attacks, checks, and saves. This does work while we're raging, so there is no need to hold back on it. As long as your DM is having you roll on the wild magic surge table often, you're going to be recharging that feature a lot. So make sure to encourage your DM to have you roll on it as much as you can. We will also have a flying speed from being a fairy, which only gets bigger and bigger as we level up in Barbarian because of the Barbarian's increased movement speed. This enables us to take advantage of the terrain and bypass many obstacles while being extremely mobile. Being able to fly at such high speeds gives us a big advantage. Out of combat is really where our spell casting comes into play. Because in combat our main thing is the big schmack, we're going to want to focus most of our spells for out of combat and utility use. Our flying speed will also be a big advantage out of combat, as we can get to hard to reach places. This can make us decent at scouting, though we don't have a great wisdom to really make use of that. We can also be an off face of the party, because our charisma isn't a negative. It won't be a very high positive because we want to focus on strength, dex, and con, but it won't be a negative, which is a upside for that. In our downtime, the Bedlam Barbarian's main focus is going to be finding a way back to the Feywild. The one he would know right off the bat is the Fey crossing that he crossed over. However, I'm sure after he couldn't find that, he would look for other ways to cross back. For our key mechanics, strength, con, and dex is going to be our main focus for our stats. However, we need a 13 for charisma so that we can multi-class in and out of Sorcerer. So whether you start in Sorcerer or start in Barbarian, you need that 13 to multi-class. As a side note, this build was mainly based on one level in Sorcerer. However, I think a second level in Sorcerer wouldn't be terrible because it gives you access to meta magic and other spell slots and spells known. The meta magic I would take is Extended Spell so that we can increase the duration of non-concentration buffs like False Life. The second level won't be game-breaking, but could be fun once you run out of worthwhile Barbarian levels, which is when you're 
ninth level of Barbarian Plus. The weaknesses of the Bedlam Barbarian is that long range combat is still going to be a major weakness. We do have some options for long range, like our cantrips, but because we are limited to first level spells and cantrips with a really low spell casting modifier, it's still not a great choice. Next, our wisdom save is really, really low. Tides of Chaos will help with this a little bit, but it doesn't fix it. It just really like covers it up with a blanket and pushes it into the corner. Being small means we can't grapple large or bigger creatures. This might be a pretty niche thing depending on your campaign setting, but it is something to note. Any creature that's large or bigger, we just can't really grapple, so we'll just have to do something else. As an NPC, I would use the Bedlam Barbarian as a guardian of the Fey Crossing. Maybe some bad people had crossed into the Feywild and burned it down, or crossed there and started hurting some fairies and pixies. So now the Bedlam Barbarian is stationed on the material plane side of that Fey Crossing as a sentinel. This would be a fun combat encounter as maybe he starts out casting spells at the party and darting in between trees like you'd expect from a normal fairy. Then at some point he would rage and just go forward smashing the party with his axe. The other way I see using this character as an NPC is that he would be lost in the material plane and he recruits the party in helping him find his way back to the Feywild. This could be very useful if you're looking for a way to get your party to the Feywild. Once they help him find this Fey crossing, they could go in as well. The keynote here is really trying to embrace the wild magic from both of our subclass choices and use it to its fullest. Really just trying to make it so we can have both of these subclasses and it's still functional. How would you use the Bedlam Barbarian in one of your games. How would you make him better? Another shout out to Knox Browning. We really hope you enjoyed this character and what we decided to do with it. Here at D&D Daily, we release new content every single day all about D&D, so make sure to hit that subscribe button if that sounds interesting to you. See you on the next one.